What's happening, everybody? And welcome to Speak of Geeky. I, as always, am your host, Mr. Geeky. I am very excited because our guest on today's show is one who works directly with The Simpsons, Disney Ultimate, Star Trek, Roger Rabbit, Kiwi, Beastie Boys, Muppets, and a handful of other incredibly fun stuff we can't discuss just yet. So, yeah, this is sure to be an incredibly fun show. And of course, I'm talking about none other than Super 7's brand manager, Nomi Kane. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm Nomi. I am a product designer at Super 7. And yeah, I'm excited to talk about some toys today. We're thrilled to have you here, first of all. And we're definitely going to jump into all those properties I just listed above. But first, I just want to give you an opportunity to tell any of the probably couple remaining people out there who somehow haven't heard about Super 7, a little more about what you do, what lines you oversee as brand manager, and what brought you to Super 7. I came to Super 7 at the very beginning of 2018, and I came from Peanuts. I was working at the Schultz studio in Santa Rosa directly for the Schultz family on Peanuts licensed products and reviewing Peanuts licensed product from all over the world, as well as doing some in-house design and illustration for publications and products that we were putting out, which was super fun. And I did get to do a little bit of art direction on some plush and on some figures. And that sort of brought me into that realm of like, how fun would it be to design these from the ground up? And so that's kind of how I came to Super 7. Being a product designer is really fun because I think it's it's a big job, which is, you know, makes it a, a lot, but it's really fun. Uh, we're kind of the only ground level people who get to see a project from like inception to on shelf. Like we follow it the whole way. And it's really fun. We get the news that we have this license. We get to come up with, you know, our wish list for it. We go through that with Brian and with Josh, and we all come to a place that everyone agrees on what we should make. And then we get to do the concept art, and then we get to art direct the sculptors, and then we get to oversee the production at factory, make sure everything's painted perfect. So we take it all the way from thought to on shelf, which is pretty wild and fun. That's really cool. And it's super, I mean, it's super involved. That's, it sounds like that's a lot more involved than probably a lot of other companies that I know of, you know, in terms of having that much oversight and having that much ability to weigh in on, you know, exactly. Yeah. I, I realized that, you know, just from talking to other people in the industry that not every company does it that way. Like there are places where the product designer literally just does concept and passes it off. But I think the advantage of the way that we do it, where we're really involved the entire process, is that it stops things from getting lost in translation and it stops details from getting, you know, misinterpreted or left off. Like it's us following it the entire way through to make sure that original vision that we agreed upon with Josh and Brian is, is what the final thing is. And so it gives, it gives continuity and a little bit of quality control for us to be the entire way through. Oh yeah. I mean, and it shows, I mean, in the final product, you can see that this is, you know, how much, how much love and attention goes into the, into the, into the product. <laughs> There's such a wealth of fun details that is very much, you can say, you can tell that a, those involved are fans and you can tell that it, you know, it's very much for the sake of the fans, right? Yeah. That is the heart of everything we do is like, you know, that's the, the super seven motto is no one made what we wanted. So we made it ourselves. And that is a hundred percent. The way that we operate is like, if I were going to buy this product, what would I want it to have? What would I want it to be? And I think that's the way you have to look at it. Otherwise you're just kind of detached and like, who wants that? <laughs> Yeah. And you're, you're directly invested, right? You want, yeah. you're, you're getting out stuff that is you've wanted to probably see for years, right? Sometimes a little too invested. Sometimes it's like, all right, it's okay. If the eyes are PMS 636 and not 637, we can live with that. Maybe just step back a minute, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, overall, it's great. That, that's a designer hat huh? where, you know, usually like your, your own worst critic, right. In terms of like, because you know what, what there was, but I think anyone seeing it will look at it and say, this is a, just a gorgeous figure, you know? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. Could you tell me, I guess, a little bit about your collecting experience when you were younger? You know, I mean, when it, it must be pretty fun getting to be in the heart of getting to make 
the toys but it's like as a kid what what did kid you look like in terms of what you collected yeah. and there's stuff that you didn't have an interest in as a kid that you now appreciate as an adult that you get to be surrounded by now you know as a kid I wasn't like a completist about collecting things I was a little more impulse driven it was just like that's cool and I want it and I was definitely very obsessed with having all the toys I wanted you know I got like two dollars a week for allowance or whatever it was once I got to be five and I would you know get to ten dollars and I would be like okay we're going to the toy store like that's where we were going but there's no question that we were going to the toy store I actually had a uh, the thing I came closest to like collecting collecting uh had to be either my little pony <laughs> which are very silly the original ones not the weird new ones because I grew up in the 80s and I was really obsessed with collecting McDonald's Happy Meal toys which are like total garbage toys in, at the end of the day they're like I mean they're cool some of them are cool looking but it's like you drop it once and it's broken and that's the end of it <laughs> so but I I loved them it was like I didn't I didn't even eat the burger most of the time I would just like <laughs> dig in and get the toy and maybe shove a few fries in like, like okay good now I'm gonna play with this this is what I want I really liked the the Disney McDonald's toys obviously were like huge for me I loved those I think especially like there were some like Lion King ones that I was really into and some Little Mermaid ones I was really I was very I was a big Disney fan as a kid in general because I feel like I I am an age where I straddled that line between like the Disney Silver Age and then like the 90s Disney, you know, onslaught and and both of those have such great films that that totally hold up. I do a lot of rewatching of things for research at this point at Super 7 and you know going back and I must have watched Robin Hood like 800 times as a kid but rewatching it as an adult, it's still great. Rewatching Lion King as an adult, it's still great. Rewatching Little Mermaid as an adult is still great, honestly. There's a lot of, just a lot of really great characters. The, the one that doesn't hold up actually is Beauty and the Beast. The character design in Beauty and the Beast, like the beast is cool and the rest of it is like just lumpy and weird and like, what? sorry, Disney. <laughs> uh, <laughs> doubt we're going to make any Beauty and the Beast toys. I'm just going to throw that out there. But uh, I could be overruled. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, that was that was the one where they kind of started migrating towards some of the CGI too, right? So like, I think that was like the very, I remember there being a big, big deal about that movie, where it was like the whole ballroom scene was like, for the first time, it wasn't, it wasn't Toy Story CGI, but it was like recreated so that it looks different than the characters, you know? Yeah, and I think it was an interesting experiment for them because after that, they started moving on to, to really cool things like Hercules and Emperor's New Groove where the characters got super stylized in this really cool way. It was almost like a return to that, like, you know, Bill P era of Disney, where everything was very like mid-century and followed some of those classic like design rules that had kind of gone out the window in like the 80s and early 90s, kind of came back in the mid to late 90s for just really great character design. I would love, love to work on any of those, should we get to them. Disney is such a deep bench. <laughs> so Oh yeah, there's 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 so much stuff there. Especially with Hercules and and Emperor's New Groove. It's like it's it's so angular too, right? It has yeah. a lot of the very toyetic possibilities there. When you think of I always like Hades. The Those designs are so I actually really like the uh muses at the beginning. Like there's something uh, I mean, even just even just for use on like apparel, like a shirt with those mm -hmm. muses, like put in the right way would be really cool. And it is sort of like, if you look at something like 101 Dalmatians, which was pretty much totally the tone was set by Bill Pete, the designs of those characters have a bit of that too. Like every wrist and every ankle has this very sharp, I love stuff like that. Like it's just a very, you know, you can do things really realistic and representational. And that is an incredible skill that I deeply respect when I see it. But at the end of the day, I prefer something a little bit more stylized because it's bringing something new to it. It's letting me see something in a new way. Like, you know, doing a painting that could be mistaken for a photograph, like skill level, you know, at 800 up here. Got it. But also the, taking the photo would be easier. Sorry, our school. <laughs> Yeah, no, but it's, it allows allows for for them to have their own creative flair to it. Not to say that, that that's not art to do something that looks so real because that that takes an enormous talent. But bringing and adding layers onto the style and creating it your own is like is what uh, gives it you know an extra point of interest. I think you know, and that's where you know also obviously 
I have so much love for peanuts. You know, one of the things is if you look at those early strips in like, you know, 1950 to 1960, basically that first decade of peanuts, Charles Schultz was drawing in this like extremely stylized, streamlined manner that looks so different from most of the peanut strips that we think of when we think of peanuts. But that's kind of some of my favorite stuff. It has this really like incredibly, like it looks like just a flick of the wrist and it's just such a great, it's so fluid and it's so streamlined and it's just, it's beautiful. It's almost like more like an inside seat to the process, yeah. right? And as, as like, because it doesn't feel fully finished, right? It, it's almost like you're getting to get behind the scenes as to the original vision for it, I think. You know? Yeah, and that you know that changed over time. I think I think the most classic iconic peanut strips are probably that like 1960 to 1980 era, where you know Snoopy has the big long nose. That, wah, wah, wah. Yeah, yeah, it looks, like a, it looks like a peanut like that's been stretched, and um, I love those too. Those are really fun. And then of course later in the 80s and early 90s, he sort of developed that tremor, and that's where you start to see. A lot more of those sort of static strips where it's just like Linus and Charlie Brown leaning on the wall. And mm. I, I actually like those strips a lot too. I, I think my favorite is still the early stuff though, just because I love that look. It's so compositionally pleasing. And that's, we use, you know, we've used some of that and it, it mostly gets forgotten. I know Metacom has done some figures using that really early Peanuts artwork that were really gorgeous, but they're kind of the only ones I can think of who've done that besides us. So that was a really fun thing to sort of bring to the fore and, and think about how to bring into 3D. That's really fun that that gets to exist. You know, I mean, you and I had we were talking a little bit about this before too, but when we were growing up, it was the idea that like we had what was like the, the really well-known characters. If there's a Sonic movie, you're getting, you know, you're getting Sonic. Right. There wasn't, I mean, we didn't even have that when we were younger, but well, that's, that's another thing. <laughs> but now because of companies like super seven, right. And, and, you know, this is getting to tap into some of those deep cuts and it's getting to tap into uh, allowing for folks who really were passionate about these franchises and characters to be able to feel like, Hey, like you guys know too, like you see me as, as a fan. And that's like a really nice touch to be able to feel seen and understood, but also to get really cool new toys on your shelf that you never thought you'd be able to have. Yeah. And I think that's the whole idea here is like, even when we're working on the characters that like, yeah, of course, everyone's going to like, we're going to bring you Mickey Mouse. Everyone's going to bring you Mickey Mouse. But what version of Mickey are we bringing you? And how are we treating him that's different than the way other people are? You know, I was working on Disney Ultimates Wave 1 and that Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey is, you know, you can buy that Mickey from other toy companies. There's other versions of that Mickey, but our goal was to get him really to feel like he came off the screen into your hands. And we wanted him to be really on model. And we wanted him to have those different expressions that you could swap in and out. And, and I think he comes with like 200 hands. <laughs> <laughs> there was a point where like I was getting test shots and I was like, do I have all the hands? Do I not have all the hands? There are so many hands here. Uh, but like, because so much of that I'm doing it there. I'm doing the Mickey hands. So much of that <laughs> segment of Fantasia is him doing the, you know, all of this. And so for him to have all those hands was really important because we want you to be able to get him in all those different poses that make him feel like he's part of that. I think what's fun there too, is that it encourages folks to be able to get multiple Mickeys to recreate the cells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone watching this is interested, it's my dream to see someone make a little stop motion video of some of our figures. If anyone That's feels really like cool. doing that, I don't have the time or the skill set, but would love to see it. That would be neat. I'm getting ahead of myself here, but is there is there a favorite character that you have been able to work on with the Disney Ultimates that you're oh, like Prince, Prince John? Prince John is like like Robin Hood. I think Robin Hood is. If it's not my all-time favorite Disney animated movie, it's very close to it. And so it was just a no-brainer. It was like, let's do Prince John. Like that, that's just awesome. flipping <laughs> cool. And no one else has done it, really. And, and, and how, right? <laughs> and like, you know, we needed to give him a few different versions of Sir Hiss, one where he's strangling him and one that you can just kind of set on display. And like, that was just, and he has a little soft goods robe. That was really important to me that we got that in there because that's such a part of his, you know, he's always like sort of bundled up in that robe, having that be a piece that you could really manipulate in the way that you can manipulate fabric made sense to me. Brian really loves Robin Hood too. So that was just an easy one for us to be like, yes, 
let's do this. <laughs> and I'm really proud of how that figure came out. I think it looks just like him. It's it's great. It's really on model. It's really fun. It's it has the right accessories to like really recreate some of those scenes. It's it's pretty spot on. I have him right here. I've got a Prince John still in the box here. So cool. Yeah, I, I feel like the head sculpts on this guy especially are just so good. I know you really like all the movies. Well, a couple questions. One is top five movies that are of your favorites from, from Disney. And then the follow-up to that would be shows, the cartoons. This is not saying any of this stuff is being made, but it's also, it's just about <laughs> stuff that you enjoy. So my favorite Disney movies, I would say number one and number two and interchangeable are 101 Dalmatians and Robin Hood. It's just the look of 101 Dalmatians is just, it's a masterpiece. Like it's just a beautiful, beautiful animated film. Every character design is like, I love Jasper and Horace, like the, <laughs> like, I just, I love all of it. And like, I, you know, if anyone follows me on the internet, you know that I am just like a massive dog person. So that, that movie is just for me in every <laughs> I actually, I really want something. I don't know what the right formulation of this is yet. I'm bouncing it around in my mind and I definitely have not sold anyone on this idea yet. But that opening sequence in 101 Dalmatians with all the people who look like their dogs is mm -hmm. just incredible. And like, it's a hard sell because I know that that's a very niche thing. And, you know, would three people buy those maybe but i want them i want them to exist i'm like ready to learn to sculpt so i can just print them out and have them for myself um. <laughs> <laughs> i bet you that if that was marketed towards the dog community and like the dog lover community 100 oh, that's getting picked up no doubt yeah how that's do i find how do i find those show. people hey dog people where are you <laughs> <laughs> it's just a gorgeous film and then i would say here's an outlier for you i'm gonna blow everyone's mind with this uh top top five pick but uh the brave little toaster i love the brave little toaster i will go to my grave loving the brave little toaster like i rewatched it i own it on on dvd which was hard to find <laughs> but rewatching it as like a, a true adult I was like you know the most unbelievable part of this story is that a boy going to college really wanted to take his vacuum cleaner <laughs> but like I don't know I, I love every story I mean I also love Toy Story uh I don't know if you, this is like a really weird niche one but has anyone ever seen Raggedy Ann Nandy's musical adventure oh I have seen it <laughs> that movie is that movie is like so I love any movie, this is what it comes down to, any movie about your possessions coming to life when you leave the room and like having adventures of their own is my favorite. Wow. Like, I just, I love Brave Little Toaster. I love Toy Story. I love Raggedy and Andy's musical adventure. Like, I want all your toys and all your belongings to be like having a life of their own. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a recipe for me to like your movie if you do that. I would, I would throw Brave Little Toaster in there. I would throw, um, I'd definitely throw Lion King in there. Like it's just, Lion King's just a great movie. Mm -hmm. um, okay, okay, my last, my last Disney movie in my top five, I'm gonna go with The Rescuers. Oh, nice. Yeah. I noticed, I noticed you didn't say Down Under. <laughs> no, 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 the original Rescuers. <laughs> Yeah. Like, just like Madame Medusa and her alligators and like, just the idea, there's something, this is like super weird, but something about Miss Bianca always reminded me of my own grandmother who did not look like a mouse. I don't know what that, there's something about her like, you know, oh, we'll take care of this, even though I'm a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> reminded me of my grandma so love that one yeah mm -hmm. i'm gonna go that's my top five classic disney i i, I approve <laughs> <laughs> thank you i mean there's so much to choose from i'm sure later i'll be like oh i forgot about this but oh i know i mean i was just as you're saying this and i realized it was like such an impossible question right as i'm like as you're telling me the names i'm like I don't know how I would be able to answer just five, right? Because I said it, I would say it and then immediately be like, oh no, it's really 80 more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I realized too, that like the Brave Little Toaster, that was always a favorite of mine too, when I was growing up. And I think that's maybe why the story of Toy Story felt so familiar because it's kind of the same movie. <laughs> well, it's also John Lasseter. So it yeah. literally is the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I feel like there's something so charming about it being appliances and like not things that normally have a face. 
<laughs> and also there's that point where they like get like thrown into that weird like reused like electronics chop shop and all the like Frankenstein appliances come out and like bully them. It's it's great. If you haven't seen it recently, go watch it. It's it's, it's fun. It's <laughs> And and that and that reminded me a bit of like Toy Story three too, where they get in the. Oh know, yeah. He's he's he he likes sneaking in really really scary parts for kids to watch and. Get Toy Story three. I thought they were actually gonna melt and incinerate everyone. Like I don't know, I'm an adult, but I was like, they're gonna do it. They're just gonna melt them, and that's gonna be the end. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not going to see these characters ever again. And I was like, I'm like a grown ass woman sitting in the movie theater, like crying because they are about to melt Woody and Buzz and friends. <laughs> How much would that have thrown people for a loop if they went in thinking my favorite characters are coming out of this unscathed? And then it's just like, nope, no, that's it. We're done. <laughs> Uh, I hope there's an alternate ending to that somewhere in the Pixar archives that we see like 30 years from now. <laughs> I feel like if there isn't an official one, someone will probably make it be, you know, in, in the next handful of years. There's no question. It's like they just fall into that molten pit and then just like cuts to the credits. We could probably make that right it's now. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's like a spookier, you have a friend in me, right? To <laughs> Just have Tom Waits sing it. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds great. <laughs> All right, so shows, right? The, there's the animated okay, shows. So shows. So like, uh, and this is hard because, you know, there's obviously the shorts, right? And are we counting the shorts? I'd say for this, maybe Disney Afternoon. Yeah, and I think that's more the stuff that, I mean, obviously DuckTales. Like DuckTales mm -hmm. all day, every day. I love DuckTales. I also like the Goof Troop. <laughs> um, I really like the Goofy movie, actually. That's what I, uh, that was like the thing that spawned from like Disney Afternoon that was really great for me. That one holds up. I watched that recently. It's great. I was just, I just this made me think. So I'm like, they made the Goofy movie, but how was there never, a, I don't want to taint your choice here because you might not be saying this, but like, how was there never a Darkwing Duck movie, right? Wasn't there like a live action Darkwing Duck movie at one point with like weird animatronics? Am I just remembering that wrong? If you are right, I need to see this and like immediately we might need that. I have a, like a weird to... creepy memory of this, but it may be false. It may be multiple things conflating in my mind. <laughs> there was, oh, there was, there was Howard the Duck, which that... that was uh, Howard the Duck, that was the, the Marvel movie that was like it was really a, a adult for the time okay and, i probably am just thinking of that that i and and it's probably that i only ever saw previews for either of these things i don't think i saw any of this but it, it would have been similar time frame so that that would that tr that tracks okay. but now yeah. now you're making me think if if there was an actual <laughs> live action i'm like i need this now. like the kazam shazam thing that's like <laughs> <laughs> I just learned about that, but it was. For uh, the record, it's Kazam. <laughs> <laughs> but well, but apparently they're having. Been bad. Yeah, yeah, they're Wait. having been bad in the second. They just confirmed that he's going to be in the second Shazam movie. That's uh, hilarious. Just to mess with people, I love just to that. mess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, uh, and I guess probably Chippendale's Rescue Rangers was like the other one that I watched regularly, which mm. those were fun. They were goofy and they were fun. I mean, I love the old Disney, you know, the Disney Saturday morning cartoons, essentially, from like, you know, the early days, the 40s and the 50s and whatnot. Like all those <laughs> old ones with like Mickey and Pluto getting into weird hijinks. I love that stuff. You know, the Brave Little Taylor, we obviously have done two versions of now because everyone loves that one. Are you going to have an at scale of the giant as well? <laughs> <laughs> Super duper size? Yeah. <laughs> that, that cooling cost is like my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those those are yeah. really fun though. I Yeah, those were, uh, those are ones where I was amazed with how they turned out and, and, and how big they were too. You know, the, the larger size one. Oh, the super size. So yeah, super size. We can definitely talk about super size because so far I've been the designer on every super size we have released. So that's uh, that's been my my jam. I'm, I'm loving your selection that you've that, those, that we've seen so far. Uh, super size is fun because it really started because we were like sitting in the office one day and Brian had this old toy from like the 60s or 70s. Gina, Gina, the alligator. Have you seen this? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like a, is it Gina or is it Gina? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anyone say it out loud. It was like a, a German cartoon series. They made these like large format, not as large as our super size, but they made these like large format 
vinyl toys with like one or two pieces of real soft goods tailored clothing mm -hmm. and brian brought one in one day i don't know if he had picked it up at a auction or something or an antique fair and he was like we need to make something like this and i was like okay and we're just like brainstorming and he's like and it needs to be fucking huge <laughs> and I was like, okay can do can do and we started with snoopy and snoopy in that like early 1950s Peanuts style because he's cool then. He's walking on four legs and he has just that beautiful like streamlined design with like the giant paws. And and we made and I was like, okay, let's make Snoopy. And I was like, let's make him this really weird Snoopy from this strip on Halloween 1952 <laughs> or three, where he wears a Charlie Brown mask. So our first super size was a uh, Snoopy wearing a Charlie Brown mask. <laughs> <laughs> which was uh you know met some mixed reviews some people were like holy shit, this is great and some people were like what is this so it was a it was an interesting place to start but from there it was very obvious we should do you know more of the peanuts gang they lend themselves to that so easily it's mm -hmm. just you know like that's that's basically what they look like already luckily charlie brown is right here <laughs> oh um, yeah so, my son my big boy um, <laughs> but like you know it was just like what was the most premium version of that was that was sort of the idea what is the most premium version of this we could possibly make and it was to do it in rotocast vinyl with like you know like this isn't like cheapo kmart fabric mm -hmm. this is like real canvas and real felt and like we just really wanted him to be the most perfect charlie brown and that's kind of what's carried us through the rest of one it's gotten a lot more elaborate from there with some of the disney ones what's fun for me i'm from i'm come from minnesota and so, uh, so does Charles exactly. And we had part of the thing that they do here is they had all these statues that were, um, that they'd have at like different locations. I grew up like with all these, you know, these statues around. And for the first time, it's like I get to have something similar in size. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna run out of room in my house. I need to add like a museum wing here because I think I'm almost at like 12 super sizes I've designed and I'm gonna need oh, one of every single one of those to get them in, of course. you know, to, for posterity, obviously. Uh, so I'm gonna need a, a bigger house. Well, and I think too, like just for the sake, it's like expanding the, the possibilities for what you can, you know, for people who like to pose different kinds of things on their shelves, especially because of all the different stuff that, that Super 7 makes, especially with the super sized stuff, you could have any variety of super, uh, super sized characters going against Kaiju and going, yeah. you know, that really, you know, makes sense to, to have up there in a, in a fun I, way. I want to see uh, Charlie Brown take on Godzilla. <laughs> Good Godzilla grief, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, no, Super Size is Super Size is really fun. It's a format, you know, obviously it's the price point is high. It's a really high end figure. And I know that's a lot to cough up for people, but what's nice about it as a designer is that sky's kind of the limit. I can really go to town and like make it perfect and make it beautiful. And there's no cost for I mean, not no, but like the cost restraints are are less on a super high-end item like that so you can get to shit like i want to embroider the sides of pinocchio's lederhosen because it's gonna look way more premium than screen printing it would and you get to do that and like and i think that's what makes it worth the price tag at the end of the day because it's not some cheap cheesy thing that will just deteriorate it's like this beautiful centerpiece and i think it's for a slightly different kind of collector than who's usually collecting our ultimates or our reaction figures which there's some crossover but it's like for someone who really likes to have just like a really beautiful display piece is what it is and they're posable you can certainly get like different expressions out of them by posing them different ways but like the articulation isn't the main focus of those does that affect the consideration in terms of you know you i'm sure you have a laundry list of characters you want to see in that in that way because of who might be the demographic picking up does it limit the ones that you can choose to do yeah because it's small run and because it, you know just it has to be small run from a costing perspective even because they're mm. very expensive to make and i think we have to think a lot about who is gonna buy this it's easier to just make something because we like it on an 18 dollar figure than it is to make something just because we like it on a 295 dollar figure <laughs> <laughs> but we don't lose that. Like we don't make anything we don't like. That's for sure. It just like narrows that discussion a little bit. I think we've done a pretty good job. You know, the, the gator from Fantasia is beautiful. And like that, that's a pretty like interesting deep cut, but it seems like people are into it. So 
great. <laughs> well, I was gonna say it's it's missing the 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 hippo counterpart still. So maybe we'll. Uh... I have noticed that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a lot of fun to see that. Impressive. Uh... <laughs> just because like right I mean that's that's the thing is like we we sort of have to think about how we design these two like in world to each other right like the peanuts ones are not designed necessarily to be in scale to the Disney ones because these are separate universes but the Disney ones we try to keep you know kind of in scale to each other so that you could put and, and all the peanuts ones we try to keep in scale to each other so you could put them on a shelf and it looks like they came out of the screen to you has there ever been I mean and you can, if you can't answer this, you can't, then don't answer it. But this is just for my own, peaking my own interest here. The conversation about trying to include one of the parents, not as a full figure, but you'd see like- Just feet. Just feet. <laughs> it would be really funny. I, I mean, I think we've talked about like the idea of like doing packaging that has just the feet, you know, and the figures in there next to it for the TV specials. That's something that, I mean, it's just like a thought. I don't, I don't know that anyone <laughs> would actually do that, but it's a good thought. I like it. <laughs> when you have this and you have the articulation of people to do such cool posing too, my my head always goes to like the, the classic dance scenes where, you know, where they'd be in the hall doing, you know, all doing their, their very specific Elaine like dances from Seinfeld. <laughs> yes. Have you seen, sorry, this is a little bit of a side note, but yeah. have you seen the video where someone mashed up like Outcast's Hey Ya with like the Peanuts Christmas special where they're all dancing on stage no but this it is... is in perfect time and it is amazing <laughs> i used to watch it was like they would have the circus circus animatronics where they would have they'd mash that with like modern music and i would be just transfixed on that i love weird video mashups there's also a great one of uh beyonce's uh single ladies video with the ducktales theme song that if you've not seen you should absolutely watch that as well yeah. it is also lined up perfectly and it's hilarious i'm like imagining i'm just i'm like thinking back to like when i'm when i'm naming the different sections of this video and it's just gonna be like <laughs> beyonce ducktales <laughs> Beyonce DuckTales. Uh, that, that sums up my interests really well, actually. <laughs> well, that's it for part one of our exclusive interview series. But stay tuned because part two is coming right around the corner. We realize you could have been anywhere and you chose to nerd out with us. And we appreciate that. And while you're here, make sure to check out some of our other really cool videos we think that you'll appreciate quite a bit. And if you haven't already, make sure to sub, like, and share with any other folks you think will appreciate the kind of videos we're putting out. So until next week, Speaky, keep it geeky.